Um, well, I'll tell you something else that's relatively new and actually does seem to be getting better. And that's going to be our next article here. Engineered bacteria could boost corn yields. Um, bacteria isolated from the roots of a corn plant and endowed with an unwavering ability to break the bonds between new, new two nitrogen atoms could help minimize the use of fertilizer in farming, according to a new study with the link to the study here in the article. So be sure to check that out. Uh, I have not reviewed this in depth. It's uh, it's uh, I, I, I definitely requires a deep, deep read. It is a paid article, by the way, and I will see if I can't get that bought and share it, at least with the patrons so they can go through that. Um, the microbes created and commercialized by the agricultural startup Pivot Bio, who we have identified here before on Burn and Return. Uh, fertilized soil more sustainably than synthetic fertilizer and are the first gene edited bacteria developed for growing cereal crops such as corn. Uh, plants need nitrogen mm. for efficient fertilizer. Each year, farmers worldwide use more than 100 million metric tons of fertilizer. However, what we have here with this engineered bacteria is a, uh, a, a, a bacteria that will allow um, the providing of 40 pounds of nitrogen um, per acre to the plant just through the use of bacteria. There are a couple of caveats here is that it does need to be reapplied every year. And uh, in certain instances in weather extremes and stuff, it could inhibit the amount of nitrogen generation that does take place. And I'll quote here at the end, uh, the microbes cannot replace all synthetic fertilizer farmers use right now. Uh, but the idea was to demonstrate the supplementing with the microbes could reliably allow them to use less of it. The gene-edited microbes are an exciting and game-changing strategy for farmers, said Shelley Mintier, a biological chemist at University of Utah, in an email. The paper clearly shows the commercial viability of this strategy. Um, I think this is great. Actually, now, there's a lot of things we do not know about this, right? So um, the long-term feasibility of use of these products, um, what are its natural predators, what happens if it becomes overabundant. Um, there's still a lot of unknowns, and maybe in this paper they address a lot of those things, maybe not. Um, and I'm sure that's a lot of the ongoing research that's taking place at Pivot Bio right now. Pivot Bio is very, very well funded. And um, in the fact that we've at least got to this part where we're able to effectively atmospherically sequester uh, 40 pounds per acre of actual nitrogen. And if that can be done with significant repeatability and significant um, uh, predictability, then this is a trend in the right direction. And I like seeing that it's less of the bugs in a jug and more of targeted directed fertility that we're used to through getting um synthetic fertilizer so while uh, at, at this point you know i'm gonna kind of juggle both sides of the aisle here and say that there's still a lot of unknowns but there are a lot of potential benefits to it uh, i'm curious gentlemen what's your take on it do you think this is the direction we should be going uh or are we are we setting ourselves up for the next pandemic No, I don't. I don't think that's going to take place. But I'm sure that uh, you know, Doctor Joe would love if uh, if he could have something else to hang his hat on and say that you know this causes whatever. Um, it's it's going to be stuff like this, right? That that I don't want to say to go as far as say saves the planet, right? I think that may be. Uh, a little too much of an overstatement and maybe you know Matt for you a little too anxiety inducing but the the idea here that we're just going to be able to continue status quo for the next 50 years and feed uh you know a growing population not necessarily here domestically cuz birth rates are slowing down and things like that but i think feeding the world this is what's going to have to take place right so I'm anxious to see what comes of, of this. And I know there's other people, the companies that are in this space trying to fool around with, okay, hey, how can we basically enhance the efficiency of what nature is already doing, right? And that'll be a key. You know, we can talk all day about, you know, plant genetics and things of that nature. But I think on this side, on what I would consider to be the input side, it, it's it's going to be stuff like this that moves the needle. So, Ray, what do you think? What I think is that, first of all, there's a precedent for this because this type of bacterial symbiosis already happens in what's, no, what's known as leguminous plants. And the, however, 
I do need to take everybody back to an old farming practice where they would alternate production in the fields between, say, grass crops and soybean, for example, or a grass crop and alfalfa. And the reason why they did that is because when you do that, the leguminous crop puts nitrogen in the soil because leguminous crops typically are symbiotic with nitrogen fixing bacteria. But I think it would be a very nice next step, provided that there's no in unintended environmental consequences for cereal and grass crops to be able to be colonized with a symbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria. My only misgiving or regret would be, for example, say what happens, Matt, if crabgrass or poa annua is colonized by this bacteria. <laughs> oh boy. Oh. <laughs> I'm, ju I'm just uh, thinking about what could possibly happen here because I, I'm just, and, and, I'm, and likewise, I'm thinking, am I sure I, for example, would enjoy having, say, zoysia or Bermuda grass colonized by this bacteria as well? My answer would be no, because 40 pounds of nitrogen per acre, that translates to me as approximately a little under a pound of nitrogen per thousand square foot. And I've personally seen what a pound of nitrogen per thousand square foot looks like regarding both the growth of weeds and the growth of turf grass. And oh dear, uh, all I'm going to say is I think you need to feed your mower some vitamins. <laughs> it's, it's, Another thing, I think, you, you know, again, there's a lot to watch how this plays out. And we clearly have pivot bio pegged um, uh, because we've talked about it multiple times now. And uh, and they have they have entered our algorithm to continue to show up. And so we'll continue to keep an eye on it. And now at least we do have a study that we can review and hopefully unpack some different things about it. And that's uh, and, I, and I plan on doing that this week and maybe next week. If there's anything of value there, then we will. Uh, we'll bring it up. Thank you for watching this clip. Be sure to tune in to the Burn and Return podcast on any of your favorite podcast apps every Wednesday, where we discuss the industry's hottest news.